announce the result. Ayes 133, noes 1. The bill is passed. Assembly Bill, Assembly bill 9639, Rules Report 21, Mr. McDonald, an act to amend the public buildings law. The bill is laid aside. Ms. Corwin for an introduction. Shh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to interrupt the proceedings. Today, aside from being budget day, it also is family day here in the chamber. And visiting from Penfield, New York, which is Assemblymember Mark John's district, is our colleague Phil Parmasano's younger sister, Kristen, and her husband, Charlton Harley. And they are here today with their three boys, CJ and Cooper, and Phil's godson, Noah. And uh, I talked to them earlier today. The boys are basketball players, and Noah says he's the best shot. So uh, we're happy to have them in the chambers today visiting their uncle. And if you could please extend the cordiality to the house, this terrific family. Certainly, on behalf of uh, Mr. Paolo Masano, Mr. John, the speaker, and all the members, we welcome this delightful family here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. And because you are family, you can always come back. We're happy to have you. I heard rumor that you've already been to the rostrum. And uh, that should be a good lesson of where you can go if you work hard at it. Thank you so very much. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 9005C, Rules Report 22, Budget Bill, an act to amend. Governor's message is at the desk. Clerk will read the message. I hereby certify to an immediate vote Andrew M. Cuomo, Governor. Mr. Farrell. Shh. Um. Mr. Speaker, this bill before us will, would enact into law major components of legislation that are necessary to implement the public protection and general government budget. The most provisions in this bill are related to various laws that are expiring and other necessary legislation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Oates. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If the uh, chair would yield. Yes, I will. Mr. Farrell yields, Mr. Yes, Oaks. I will, Mr. Oaks. Yes, I will, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Denny. Um, seeing as uh, this is the first of a number of uh, pieces of legislation, hopefully, that we're going to see today, um, I thought I would uh, talk with you a little bit um, about uh, where we are uh, in the process, if, if that would be okay. In our uh, discussions at the Ways and Means Committee, I asked a number of questions about the overall spending, some of the typical questions that members um, might expect to hear as we're putting this together. Um, but at this point, uh, you had mentioned that we really don't have all of those numbers, and so uh, that piece uh, we can come back to later. You don't have anything since then that would... Uh... No, I, I have not. So the, these three current bills, I, dealing with the first one here um, and the other two that we have uh, had go through the Ways, Means, and Rules process, um, we have these, and we're, we're going to be taking those up now. Um, when do we expect... Uh, to see the other bills. Do we have a, a sense of that now? 
Um, the short answer is today. Daylight? I don't know because I can't see it from here. <laughs> All right. Um, it, if, if we're going to see all of those today, the intent would be to deal with all of those today um, and also then require messages uh, from the governor for us to consider any of them? Y yes. Uh, as we are here today st starting to pass uh, these uh, bills and consider them, um, are there negotiations ongoing still with parts of the other pieces uh, or the other bills that we don't have before us? Yes. Do we know what the outstanding issues are that are uh, holding us up at this point? Or? I don't know them right now. I've been doing other things, but staff is still working. They probably know. Do, do you think there's potential that we might, um, I know we're here on uh, Thursday, March 31st, is there potential that uh, we might see things late enough that we're going to go uh, into uh, tomorrow before we get all of these bills considered? With your help, I am positive that we can get it all done by the end of this day. I'll help as much as I can, but I, I will say that when we get things, how we're going to be able to review that and, and get through and certainly have questions answered that need to be asked, um, uh, we, we can try to do that, but that, that certainly may be a, a challenge. Yes, it will be. The, the bills, if I look at this one and the other two that we're going to consider, there seems to be a number of things the governor had put in or were included in either the Senate or Assembly One House uh, bills, and then they aren't a part of these bills. And um, the concern would be that uh, we're going to maybe not see any of those things, or maybe that's a good thing, or we might see those in a very untraditional place jammed in with a whole bunch of other uh, issues. Do we know um, how that's going to uh, proceed? Um, yes, uh, we are putting the things that are not in these bills. They're probably, some of them are the ones that they're still negotiating, but I'm positive they will have it ready again for today. So even though like the health care bill which is next mm -hmm. uh, we may see some health care in the education and labor bill and uh, yeah the last bill will probably have all of the bills that we have um, are not in these three here. I will um, I'm sure uh, get back to you on when we get some of the other information to talk about some of the overall view and I look forward uh, to that question. Uh, specifically on this bill um, that we have before us uh, on the, the public protection in general government. Um, there is an amount uh, within the workers' compensation reform legislation of uh, $10 million uh, that it says would be used for paid family leave. Do we have a sense uh, of how that ten mil why that $10 million is required and how that money is going to be spent in the 2016-17 budget year. Well, let's see. The enacted budget includes up to $10 million that would be transferred to the Department of Financial Services to support the cost of implementation <clears throat> of paid family leave. There would be a startup cost to the department related to the administrative functions including expanding existing oversight of insurance policies to include paid family leave benefits and setting, setting the maximum employees' contribution. So for the whole process of setting it up, do we see that this is going to require additional state staff hiring employees, uh, adding to the overall state budget, and is this going to be something that we can expect to see increased costs in future years as well, or is this a one-time expense? No. The answer is no, no, and no. There were three questions. No. No. All right. Well, 
Um, thank you. I'm sure uh, there may be some other uh, questions that individuals have, uh, and certainly, Mr. Chairman, we'll be back uh, a number of times over the next number of hours on the bill, Mr. Speaker. I really on look the forward bill. to it. Thank you, Mr. Jenny. Oates. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, as we sit here today dealing with the first of a number of budget bills, I do have some uh, major concerns. We don't have a financial plan before us. Uh, we don't have a spending plan. We can't tell the numbers at the end. It makes it difficult, I think, for us as a body, for individual legislators to try to make a determination of uh, how is this all going to fit together? Should I be uh, voting for this portion or that? How do we make uh, those determinations? The other thing is I uh, have to express my deep disappointment uh, as we stand here today uh, we had an opportunity uh, when we came out of last year uh, with the top legislative leaders uh, convicted of issues and abuse of power, a lot of it that came directly out of situation of a really closed and secretive budget process. And for me, I came into January of 2016 with a great hope uh, that we would have the opportunity, that we did have the opportunity to do things differently as the budget was presented by the governor, it was considered through our hearing process, and then as we got down to the negotiation process of that budget, and I made comments about this is a time that opening it up, having a minority as well as majority uh, input, uh, to me, the best ideas, the best decisions I've made in my life or in group ones, it's when you maybe don't include every person in trying to figure that out, but including a wide enough diversity of views so you end up making the best decision. Gee, maybe the answer to solving the problem and maybe the answer to solving some of the problems that have carried us out this budget process to the last hour as it is uh, going to and maybe beyond tonight, those ways to solve those problems could have come out of uh, individuals giving perspectives uh, that uh, more reflect the totality and the diversity, the diversity, the difference across New York State of our people. And so um, the disappointment is not only were we like it had been in the past and a rerun of the past. Instead, this year, in the year where we should have been and had the opportunity to do things differently, we're right now in the midst of finishing up the most secretive, the most closed, the least transparent process that I've ever seen. I think that, in the end, doesn't serve the nearly 20 million people of New York, the constituents that each of us represent, it doesn't serve us well. It's something that this year we missed the boat on. Um, but we will go from here and uh, see uh, what other proposals that might be before us. And as we might consider them, I would just uh, ask that as we do that, we also consider that how much better it could have been if we had really changed the process. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Oates. Mr. Goodell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the sponsor yield? Will you yield, Mr. Farrell? Yes, I will, Mr. Goodell. Mr. Farrell yields. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Farrell. <clears throat> Is there... Uh, do we anticipate that the state comptroller is going to be processing any payments on Saturday or Sunday this week? I'm sorry, ask that again? Sure. Do we anticipate that the New York State Comptroller will be processing any payments or checks or anything like that over this weekend, you know, Saturday or Sunday? I don't know what he does. <laughs> I think uh, there's many of us that apparently share that opinion. <laughs> But I think it's safe to say that they're not normally open on Saturday and Sunday. Oh, again, I don't know how they run that office. 
And uh, I, I think it's safe to say that most of our major banking institutions are not open on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays. Hmm. No, you're, you're, not, you're not in the past. My bank is open seven days a week. And it's two, and it's two blocks from my house. And uh, you may, write, may you realize that they don't post any deposits uh, oh, until... Oh, that's something else, but they're open. Yes, uh, until Monday. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, uh, most of our school districts, towns, villages, counties, they're not open over the weekend. So my question is, if we're not really doing any serious financial work over the weekend, why do we have an emergency that would justify passing this budget without providing any opportunity whatsoever for any of our constituents to read the budget, give us input, or allow even us time to reflect on it more? What is the emergency that requires that we adopt it on Thursday late afternoon rather than, say, Monday after the weekend? Well, there's a long answer to that one, but I'll give you the short one. Uh, the, the reason we do it and this way is because we've had this 90 percent, 95 percent of the things we're going to vote for, we have had out since January 21st when it was put under our desk electronically. Notice I did that with the gentleman in the back there. And uh, Mr. Tedesco appreciates that. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but we had it, and the citizens have a very strong ability, if they want to, to see all of that. I know I put a lot of it in my um, um, presentations on the, using my iPod, all the things I've put out there. I know you probably do that. So the people that really care, they have learned what 95% of this is going to be. Then we did something two weeks ago which showed another place where we were going. And then we, we went into putting the mothership out, as we say, and people started working there. So nothing here that is being done when we're finished with everything will be something that was not known to be in play, to say. So doing it on time which is something that the press want us to do and the people want us to do. And you know our checks are not coming to us this week, next week. We're going to have to pick it up. And that is important, but that's not the most important thing. I joke when I mention that. So I think what we're doing now is the best thing. Let's get it done so we can go on and continue to do other work for the people in the coming weeks. Well, I, I certainly appreciate your comments that major portions of this budget have been available in some form mm -hmm. for an extended time period, which has enabled me to read much of it. I'm mm -hmm. sure you appreciate that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but there are also critical portions of this budget that we don't know about even now as we're debating, right? We don't know the details of whether there's a minimum wage and how much and how long. Oh, come now. Just for the record, the newspapers have not gotten it wrong yet. <laughs> they get everything. So if you really want to know, especially that specific one you pick, every time my phone buzzes, it's another change, and the change is down. Well, you know, I would appreciate that. though we may sometimes not have that happen. <laughs> Sir, and I certainly appreciate the skill of all of our reporters, but it doesn't take away from the fact that we don't have any bill language hmm. on minimum wage yet, do we? Do we have it in print? No. And do we have any bill language on paid family leave? Not, no. And so those are two pretty serious aspects, and they've been a lot of negotiation and a lot of rumors and a lot of news reports, but we're on the last day and we don't have any bill language yet. No, but we do know that there's a program out, there's a, a deci the decisions going to be made based on getting to $15. $15 dollars number, um, and we've had different ways of seeing it. So anything that is said, and when it becomes the law, is something that you would have seen in the paper or seen in some of the pr printing your office does, just to keep track of what's going on. 
Do so we, again, it's not new. Do we anticipate that any of those minimum wage changes are going to occur effective tomorrow? No. And do we anticipate that any paid family leave changes will become effective tomorrow? No. Well, then why aren't we voting on, mon on them on Monday after we have the full three days to review the language? Because then it would be late, and our job is to be on time. Well, neither of those provisions would be late, correct? Because none of those provisions relate to any budgetary appropriations. Am I correct? I'm sorry. Say that again. I'm I'm, there are other – none of those provisions, whether it's minimum wage or paid family leave, there's no reason why we can't adopt those outside the scope of the budget process, correct? Yeah, but we decided to do it in it, and we put a lot of time into it and we will have it finished by this evening. So that means then that since we don't have to do it as part of the budget process, we wouldn't be late if we did it on Monday, No, right? if we w w then you would be able to stand up on Monday and say, Denny, why are we late? Oh, I wouldn't why say it on those two, believe me. I, I'll, t I'll tell you right now, I would say, thank you, Denny. <laughs> I'm glad we allowed the citizens of this state to review the actual language for at least a couple days. Well, well I, I would assume that other people of your elk, and I don't know how to describe that. <laughs> You're not allowed to say other words. Uh, and, and would thank would, you. would I, surely I complain that we had a late budget. Now, of course, you know, I, I wouldn't be comfortable here if I didn't bring up the fact that Article 3 of the State Constitution, Section 14, deals with the statement of necessity. Mm -hmm. And it says that the governor, in making that statement of necessity, must, quote, state the facts which, in his or her opinion, necessitate an immediate vote thereon. What facts were stated by the governor in his statement of necessity? Having to vote, I don't know, I didn't read it, but I would assume it's to have the bill done on time. If I may change the subject slightly? Yes, you may. Looking at Part G of this budget, uh, this uh, relates to the workers' compensation program. How much does the workers' compensation program have in assessment reserves? $485 million. And those assessment reserves are the result of uh, Payments by employers that exceed the claims against the fund, is that correct? Say that again. That assessment, assessment reserve is a result of payments made by employers that exceed expenses incurred by the workers' compensation fund? Yes. No, no, no my, hold it. <laughs> yeah. It has different, it, it's different assessments that gets into that number you get the 485, not just one. But all those assessments are paid by employers, are they not? Yes. And so out of the money that was paid by employers, we're paying $140 million out to other programs, am I correct? 149, yes. And included amongst that 149 million that has been paid by employers in the workers' compensation fund, we're transferring 10 million? Yes. For the implementation of paid family leave? Yes. So that 10 million is coming entirely from money paid by employers? Yes. So the statement that was made a few weeks ago by Alfonso David, who is uh, apparently the governor's counsel, that employers would not incur any costs is just wrong, right? Because right now, right here in this budget, employers will be paying $10 million to kick off the paid family leave. Am I correct? This money is money they put in. <clears throat> and we're taking that money to use it now, but when we use it, it will make better for them in the future, so they end up doing better than losing. But this $10 million is coming from employer payments that have been made in the past, correct? Yes. And so this program is costing the employers $10 million 
right up front. Because no. certainly that $10 million could have been used to reduce well, I'm not asking. I'm not asking him to put one penny on the desk. Ah, we're just using all the money they paid in the past. Well, that's right. I see. Uh, he also said, by the way, the, the governor's counsel, that this wouldn't cost the state any money, which is why there's no appropriation in the budget. That's what he said. But clearly, there's going to be an appropriation in the budget because we have $10 million right here, right? No. There is no appropriation, so this is not an appropriation. Uh, it's not an appropriation because we're just taking the money out of the employer's paid workers' comp fund and transferring it. Is we're that shift, correct? We're shifting it. Now, I see that on page 7 it goes on to say, any and all funds remaining after accounting for the transfers and expenditures set forth above may in the discretion be transferred to offset budget gaps. Are we referring to any money still remaining in the assessment reserves or only any money that might be remaining after the $40 million that goes to uh, these various listed programs? Okay, thank you. Okay. The reason why there isn't an appropriation, as I said, and why it doesn't affect right now is because this will not go into effect until 20, uh, 2018. And at that time, we will do the appropriation, and that will tell us how we're paying for it. Although the $10 million is effective immediately. That yeah, it, yeah effective well, it's shifting of the money. Um, when we look at the assessment reserve, when we look at the assessment reserve, I understand why we want a reserve, but apparently we are of the opinion that there's about 140 million excess in that reserve that enables us to transfer that 147 million somewhere else. Yes. Why aren't we using that 147 million to reduce workers' compensation costs, which are amongst the highest in the nation? That's a good question. I, I can't answer that. That's not my, as they say, my grade. Okay. So instead of giving a break to all the employers on the workers' compensation, we continue to charge them too much and then use their money to fund paid family leave, all the while telling them that they're not paying for it, right? Well, they are not paying for it, as I said before, because we haven't made an oh, appropriate. Oh, prepaid. I'm sorry, prepaid. Yeah, pre prepaid, yes. They just didn't know we, they were no, prepaid. No, I, I would call it shifting. Yeah, We've okay. shifted the money into another location. <laughs> and and, some and, of us might agree it's a little shifty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, uh, uh, well, I've known about my standing in this position over the years. Shifting of money is, is something we do all the time, but we keep track of it, so it's always public. You can always look it up if you can read really fine print, as you do know, do and know. So I would say yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Farrell. You're welcome. On the bill. On the bill, Mr. Goodell. We all know the state of New York is not going to grind to a halt over the weekend. We know the state comptroller is not going to be working over the weekend anyway. We know that our schools and towns and villages and municipalities, they're not working over the weekend and they're not picking up mail on Sunday because the post office doesn't deliver it on that day. And so they're not waiting for any financial issues from us. We know that. And we know that there are big pieces of this budget that we'll discuss later, <laughs> since I'm apparently out of town, time. Very I'm astute. We ought to take our time doing it right rather than rush it through. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There's another lesson in timeliness. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Lopez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Farrell Yield. So I'd Mr. Like to, Farrell Yield. Thank you, Mr. Farrell. I'd like to pick up where my colleague left off. And so I, I'd like to go back to, to I, I believe it's Part G, the uh, workers' compensation um, portion of, the, of this bill. So in, in the language, it's my understanding, uh, again, we have a number of payments or, or uh, dollar amounts enumerated, $140 million for partial payment to the 
fund for coverage of the employees for workers' comp. Where are you reading from? Uh, this should be effective immediately. The chair of the workers' compensation board shall authorize the board to expand $40 million. That one? Yeah, we have a, a number of, of um, purposes enumerated. So $140 million, uh, $60 million redesigned infrastructure operations, uh, $40 million for the workers' compensation board to expand yeah. training educational programs. Mm -hmm. So so are you following me with that? I don't yeah. have the specific line in front of me, but. Yes. Yes. So, so we're using that, and, and again, there was a question about the state taking $10 million and using that presumably to, uh, to handle the family, uh, uh, paid family leave, which we haven't gotten to yet. But further in, the, in, the, in this bill, it's my understanding that there's language that provides that any and all remaining funds can be transferred from workers' comp board to the state general fund to cover general purpose budget gaps. Is that accurate? Yes. So I guess my question is, you know, presumably, fiscally, we're in better shape this year than we were a couple of years ago when this same House uh, joined the governor in sweeping some $5 billion uh, in funds from the state uh, workers' comp board um, for general purposes. So my, my first question is, what is the remaining amount, and why do we feel we have to sweep endlessly from workers' comp board for premiums that should be used and stay within the workers' comp uh, system. Why, why are we doing this? I think we call those one yeah. Well, we do do the sweeps because we can do a lot of good with what, what we take out of there. And um, as you know or may know, uh, we may be seeing later a bill that is going to cut some taxes that we're paying. So some of those things sometimes are necessary elsewhere. <clears throat> so we are going to continue to do this. You know, we, we, and we do sweeps over the years, but we're getting tighter and tighter as we do what we do. So, so do we have a, a dollar amount of what is available for further sweeping from this fund? No. Um, the, 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 the whole thing is 485. So 485? But, yeah, but, we, but, that, but we, that's what we have there in case the economy goes bad and uh, people lose jobs. You suddenly, that number may not. But we think what we, the amount we've taken out is enough, of, is, is Leave say, leaves us still safe in terms of the people who rely on this program. So I, I guess I'm a little confused. So, so we're, we're stipulating in this legislation that some $240 million will be used for certain purposes, mostly within the workers' comp fund itself, more yes. administrative and ministerial. Mm -hmm. So that leaves us, as I understand, another $245 million, which I understand, according to language in the bill, is up for grabs, can be swept at any time once this legislation is adopted. Is that accurate? Well, things, we can always go and sweep. We have a lot of other things where you can go and sweep. So it is there, but then we also know not to get ourselves into trouble by taking out too much. So we think that the numbers you just mentioned will function and will not do damage to anybody. So.